Why we're here today is to welcome a great new friend to the University of South Carolina, Ashraf Habibullah. I originally met Ashraf while I was previously at another university, Iowa State University. When we first invited him, we instantly became a friend to that university and has done a ton for the Women in Science and Engineering program. And he does that not only there, but at universities across the country and the world. Uh, we're so glad to have him, so glad to have his partnership, and that's why we're so happy to have him here at the University of South Carolina. We have different labs here at the department. Uh, we tour the structures lab, we tour the water resources lab, so the geotech lab. In the structures lab, we looked at some research that is uh, involving floor vibrations, but with the goal of looking at human health. So we're estimating the gate parameters using floor vibrations and then trying to determine changes in health status uh, based on those changes in floor vibrations. And then the other research that we looked at is we looked at some railway engineering using computer vision, especially digital image correlation to look at damage on the track. That's work done by Dimitri Rizos. I just love the fact that you have this relentless passion that is completely untainted by the realities of life. Why well, want you to stay that way like forever? Because it's just, to me, you are the inspiration. So we had the opportunity to, to have Ashraf talking to students and really emphasizing the importance of this human connection to engineering students. And knowing how Ashraf talks, not just about engineering, but about life, I thought it was very important for them to hear and have that more intimate conversation with him. To live out of your comfort zone. If you're scared to do something, do it. You know, the biggest tragedy in life is not death. The biggest tragedy in life is coming to the end of your life and looking back at all of the opportunities that you missed because you were scared to open the door when opportunity knocked. You were afraid to put yourself into a zone of discomfort. Start now and it becomes easier. It's the most difficult thing to do. Not because you don't have time because you're scared. <laughs> Some of the unique things that we have at the University of South Carolina is, yeah, we have a great engineering and computing uh, college, and it's literally right next door to our dance program. And as many people know, Ashraf is not only a fan of engineering, but also of the arts. Um, this is Ashraf Habibula. Ashraf, you're welcome to introduce yourself, or I'm also happy to do it. <laughs> you go for it. All right. So today, um, we have Ashraf here to observe our newly named Betsy Blackman dance program here at the University of South Carolina. He's right now observing our beginning ballet class. So these are all first year students. Most of them are dance majors or double majors, some in STEM and dance. And that is one of the main reasons that Ashraf is here today. His passion, combining his passion for dance as well as women in STEM is a great opportunity for him to meet some of our blossoming dancers. So a lot of our dancers find that they have passions in both areas and I think that they feel that they want to still continue their dance education and training at this fabulous institution while also learning from our other um, branches of the university. Um, we have a phenomenal biology program as well as engineering. Um, one of the dancers he'll meet today is actually a double major in dance and mechanical engineering. I did actually found the company called the Diablo Ballet back in 1993 and they just celebrated their 30th anniversary and uh, um, I was the board president for 15 years. So uh, yeah, so I have a kind of real um, personal connection with, with the dancers and, and with dance. I do, you know, appreciate the art very much and I just think that it's something that uh, uh, arts are just so very important because arts is the only thing that brings out human emotion. And uh, when you're asleep at night, your brain goes through everything that you did during the day again and again and again 
but the things that it holds on to that actually have given you an emotional response during the day. So it's very important, especially as engineers who have a tendency to rather be technical and their exposure to arts is more or less zero. I'm looking at this stuff, I mean, I, I start sweating just looking at you do your thing because I know how hard it is. I'm double majoring in dance, performance and choreography and biology. So I think his concept of human engineering was really fascinating and how there's always going to be some aspect of humanness that everyone can relate to and that's really what's going to sell your product or your business and that's kind of what brings everyone together. So if you can find that human engineering to bring people in, you'll be really successful in life. And I thought that was interesting with being a dancer and kind of that being what you can use to draw people in. Let me tell you about art. You know, when you go to engineering school here, you're basically all of you, 500 of you, 5,000, whoever you are, you go to the same class, you learn from the same professor, and you learn the same stuff. Well, what makes you different? You know, there's 500 of you that graduated with you, they all know the same stuff, so why are you so special? You see, your artistic side allows you to add your own color to everything that you do. That's what makes you different. When you're different, you're interesting. When you're interesting, people like you. When people like you, they do as they're told, and you get what you want. So it's not rocket science, but the artistic side of a person is so very important. And then your profession. Oh my God, you belong to the most incredible profession. You know, because uh, the beauty about a technical profession is, I would speak for engineering because I know engineering very well, but for engineering profession, the one of the most powerful things that an engineering profession does, especially going through college for four years, it teaches you how to think logically. It so, uh, teaches you how to figure things out for yourself. That's what engineering is, problem solving. And when you go to an amazing university like this, where you have amazing faculty, what an amazing faculty does, they instill in you a willingness to learn. So when you leave the university, you have two things going for you. You have the power to think logically and you have a willingness to learn so that every piece of knowledge that you look at, you absorb like a sponge. And you know what that means? That means, yes, you have a degree from here in engineering. What engineering? You could step into any field and figure it out and be amazing at it. That's the power that you have. That's the basic power that a, a technical education gives you. And just because you were in civil engineering and you get into the profession and you find out this thing sucks, you don't have to stay with that. You go to something else. You only spent four years here. You got that taught you how to think logically and how to get excited about new things. So you just do that, spend another four years. You've got 80 years ahead of you. You could have 20 degrees the way you have. So when people come to me and say, what should I do? I say, what should not you do? You know, you should do everything because that is the key thing. Don't go looking for your passion. Try everything because if you try everything, your passion will find you and you will end up having a job so wonderful that you're willing to do it for free. And at that point, you would have mastered the art of living.